Okay, we are going to look at two different writing prompts for grades six to eight. This one here, time on the computer, and this one here, soil testing. When we are looking at these, we are going to be thinking, how can we turn this information into a four square to help us plan for the writing? Something to keep in mind is that when we are writing in English, we really like to use the number three. If you think about the four square, we have the green, purple, and orange squares as three things or three groups that we really um, give examples about. So we're gonna be looking for things that are in three. So let's take a look at this first one. It says time on the computer. This table shows how much time students from two different schools spend doing different activities on the computer. First of all, the word table is not talking about the table. It's a math word talking about something that has numbers and words. You'll see lines going up and down and lines going across. And we will have information in these boxes. This is a table. We call these columns and rows. We can get information going up and down and information going across. And there will be a title that will help us know what all of this information means. Something else I notice here is I see the word two schools and different and different. That makes me think right away of compare contrast. Compare contrast is when we have two different things and we are going to talk about how they are the same, that's compare, and how they are different, that's contrast. Okay, before I look at this anymore, I want to find out what is the writing prompt? What do they want me to do? I'm going to skip over this part here and look right here. Right there it says compare. Okay, so I know I'm doing a compare contrast writing. How much time students from Ford and Grant? I need to look for those words, Ford and Grant. So I will be looking for those on this paper. How much time students from here and here, I know these are places because they begin with a capital F and a capital G, spend on each computer activity. Computer activity, I'm also going to look for that. You can see computer activity, Ford Grant. Write three to five sentences about how the student's time on each activity is similar and different. That's my compare and contrast. Use information from the table to help you. And here's my table. So now I need to really look at this table and try to understand it. The title is Average Time Spent Each Day on Computer Activities. It would help to understand what average means, but we might be able to do it without understanding that. Average is a word we use in math. And here is, I don't know where I put my example, but I will show you again, unless I put it on the back one. Here it is. If someone spent 30 minutes and someone else spent 60 minutes, so each student would be asked, how many minutes do you spend on the computer doing this? And they might say 30, and the next student says 60, and the next student says 90, and one says 45. And then after you have asked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people, you can add up all of those minutes and get a total, and then you divide it by the number of people who you asked, which is eight. And the answer that you get is the average. Another word that means almost the same thing as average is mean. And I know that word 
also means not nice, but in math it means average or almost the same as this. Okay, so time spent each day on the computer activities. Computer activities are things we do. So here are the computer activities. Look down here at the list. Video games, reading, working on schoolwork. Then we have the Ford School and the Grant School. So if we come down here and look, the Ford School kids spent, on average, 40 minutes playing video games each day. And the kids at Grant School, only 20 minutes. At Ford School, they spent 10 minutes each day reading, and Grant School spent 35. Looking at schoolwork, both schools did 60 minutes. So right away, we can see this is the same. This We can compare and say that's the same. These two are different, and these two are different. When we look at the total number of minutes, we add these up. The kids at this school spent an average of 110 minutes a day on the computer, and these kids at this school an average of 115 minutes. So that is almost the same. And then they're going to ask us here some questions to help us make sure that we're looking at the data. These numbers in each of these boxes is data. And they want us to make sure we under, they want to make sure we understand it. Then we need to look at what we're going to write about. Okay, so we want to make a plan. So let's think about how we can do this. Let's see. If we can do this so you can see all of this on one page. All right, I think actually I'm going to make my four square kind of small so that you can see. Let me see if you can see that on one page here. Yes, okay. So I draw my line down, draw my line across, make my box in the middle my eraser and go like this. Okay, so this is going to be one paragraph because it asked us to do, we need to make sure, only three to five sentences, okay? And what do they want the sentences to be about? How the student's time on each activity is similar and different. Okay, so we're looking for three things. Well, here we can find them. One, two, three. There are three activities. So I'm going to make this one. This will be my main idea. This is going to be my first activity, which is going to be video games. This one will be reading online. This one here will be schoolwork. Okay, so this will be sentence one, two, three, four, five. This one will be my as you can see. And this one will be my main idea. To find my main idea, I'm going to look at the question again more carefully. The question says, compare how much time students from Ford and Grant spend on each computer activity. How the student's time on each activity is similar and different. I am going to use, I, I know that we, we have a pattern when we're doing a compare and contrast I've said make your pattern uh, thing one is similar to and different from or just is different from. 
Although they are asking here for this to be similar and different. So I could say is similar to and different from thing number two. But this one, I think it would make it too long because thing number one is the student's time on each activity at Ford School and the student's time on each activity at the Grant School. And that would be kind of hard to say, right? The, the student's time on each activity at Ford is similar to and different from the student's time on each activity at Grant. I think that is, I don't like how that sounds. So I'm gonna see if I can take the words right here in the question and use them in my main idea. So I think for my main idea, I'm going to say, I wanna make sure you can see that. Okay. I think for my main idea, I'm going to say, um, where can I put this so you can see it here? How about like that? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, how about the students from Ford and Grant spend similar and different amounts of time on each computer activity. So I'm gonna say the students, actually I'll just write it here in my box here. Can you see that? Okay, I'm gonna say the students at Ford and Grant spend similar and different um, amounts of time on computer activities. And if you don't remember how to spell computer activities, it is right here, computer by my thumb, computer activities, right there. Okay, so it just wants to know how the time is similar and different. So we're gonna go back now and look at our table. Let me see if you can see the table. Okay. So with video games, Ford is 40 minutes and Grant is 20. So we could say something like the Ford students Spend 40 minutes playing video games. And I'm getting this word spend from this word here, but I changed the spent to spend. Spend 40 minutes playing video games. Now, there's a couple ways I could do this. I'm gonna do either a compound or a complex sentence. And knowing our signal words for compare and contrast would help us. Those are, let me see if I can. Those are these words here. Okay, so Words that help us know we're comparing are both, is a good one to know, have in common. For contrast or contrast, using but with a compound sentence is good. Using even though or while 
with a complex sentence is good, as opposed to, however, on the other hand, I'm thinking for this one of using while or but. Let's see how that would look. I think it's a good idea for you to pick out to know both will help you show a comparison and but and even though will show a contrast and also while. Okay, so looking back here at my four square, I could say the Ford students spend 40 minutes playing video games while the Grant students only spend 20. Or, so that would look like this, while the Grant students only spend 20 minutes. And this you can see, here's our subject and our verb. And over here we have the grant students and the verb. So that means we have two clauses. The first one is the Ford students. Okay, that's the first sentence. The Ford students spend 40 minutes playing video games. There's the Ford students spend 40 minutes playing video games. So I'm copying the words. I'm using the conjunction while, which is a purple conjunction. So it's going to make a dependent clause. So that turns this whole clause into a dependent clause. If I didn't have the word while, that would be independent. I could say, the grant students only spend 20 minutes. That would be a sentence all by itself. But when I add the word while to the front of it, it turns this into a dependent clause. But because the independent clause goes first, and this goes second. You can see while is in the middle now, the middle of this one and this one. We do not need a comma. The other way to do this would be to say, put turn that period at the end of games into a comma. Oops, sorry. Turn this into a comma and write uh, but. We could use but, and this would be a comma. The Ford, and we get rid of while. The Ford students spend 40 minutes playing video games, but the grant students only spend 20 minutes. Okay, you could do either one. But I'm going to use while, so I don't need a comma. Reading online, I look here, 35 and 10. So here I could say, uh, I have to decide who I want to say it first. Um, Here I could say the grant students spend 35 minutes reading online. comma, but the Ford students only spend 10 minutes. This sentence follows the same pattern as this sentence, but I'm using comma, but for my conjunction. And but is orange. And so I have a comma. So that is a compound sentence. This is a complex sentence. This one is compound. And this one over here is complex. You can see in both of them that I put the students first who are doing the best. 
No, I didn't. <laughs> well, that are doing the most, right? This, this, um, it, it's probably better to not spend as much time on video games, but I'm putting the bigger number first, 40 and 35, because I want to say while this, these students only spend, that means a, a smaller number would make sense. I wouldn't say the grant students spend 20 minutes while these students only spend 40. If you're gonna use only while these only spend, you want this to be the smaller number and this the bigger number. An even simpler way to do this, because there's more than one way to do this, is you could say right here, for this one, you could just say the Ford, let me use green, because that's my green, square, the Ford students spend more time playing video games than the grant students. Okay. You could, you could say that here instead. And over here, so this is my, my green square. And then over here in the purple one, you could say here in my purple square that the, the grant students spend more time reading online than the Ford students. Okay. For schoolwork, <coughs> it's the same. So here you could say both schools or you could say at both schools the students spend the same amount of time. Working on schoolwork. And I'm just going to copy working on schoolwork. So I'm copying working on schoolwork. I'm copying reading online. I'm not worrying about newspapers and magazines and I'm copying playing video games. And I copied computer activities. And then I'm just gonna finish by saying, as you can see, the grant students, this is going to be my opinion, are making better choices. on the computer. So then when I write this into my paragraph, I only have five sentences. So I will put down my two fingers, make an X, copy, let me make sure you can see this here. Okay, copy my main idea, 
the students. I got all of these words from the directions right here. Compare how much time. Okay, so the students at Ford and Grant, make sure that's a capital F, it's the name of the school, and Grant spend similar and different amounts. Amount means how much. Amounts of time on computer activities. Okay, I'm going to cross that off and come to my green. Now I am not doing a five paragraph essay. I'm doing one paragraph with five sentences. So I'm going to come over here. Now, I can choose this one or this one. I can say the Ford students spend, it should be spend more time, spend more time playing video games than the Grant students. Or I can say the Ford students spend 40 minutes playing video games while the Grant students only spend 20 minutes. Well, it did ask me to use data and data means numbers. So I'm gonna go with this one. And I'm going to have my, try to remember our transition words. This one is to begin with. So I'm gonna write that down and I'm gonna put it right here after the period. To begin with, comma, the Ford students spend 40 minutes playing video games I'm going to use purple here so you can see that I have a conjunction turning this into a complex sentence. While the grant students, that's the subject of the dependent clause, the grant students only spend. Now this word only is important, but it only makes sense if my next number is smaller than this number. Only spend 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm done with that one. I'm going to go to my purple paragraph and remember my next transition word is in addition. Try to memorize the transition words that we use with the four square. Make sure you can see that. Okay, so I can choose this one or this one. But I think because I chose this one with numbers, I'm also going to follow the same pattern. So I will say, in addition, and I start right after my period, in addition, comma, and then I copy. The grant students spend 35 minutes reading online, comma, but the Ford students only spend 10 minutes. Cross this out. Okay, then I'm going to come down to my orange paragraph. And 
this transition is also. Although, I'm not going to use it because, look what I'm using here, I'm saying at both schools, and that will work as a transition. So here I'm just going to say, and I could put right here, at both schools, the students spend the same now, if you do not know the word amount and you can't think of it, then you can just write the same time, the same time working on schoolwork. And then we're going to come to our concluding sentence. And we say, as you can see, The grant students are making better choices on the computer. And if you have time, you could turn this into a complex sentence. It is getting a little bit long, but you could add the answer. Like, why are you saying that? Well, you could give an answer with because and say because they are reading more and playing less. However, if you want to stop right here after computer, you could do that too. But you'll see here, here's the subject, and here's a subject, and here's the verb, and here's the verb. So it's a subject, verb, subject, verb. This is a clause, this is a clause. And we're connecting it with because. So let's read what we have. The students at Ford and Grant spend similar and different amounts of time on computer activities. To begin with, the Ford students spend 40 minutes playing video games while the Grant students only spend 20 minutes. In addition, the Grant students spend 35 minutes reading online, but the Ford students only spend 10 minutes. At both schools, the students spend the same amount of time working on schoolwork. As you can see, the grant students are making better choices on the computer because they are reading more and playing less. Some things that I want to point out are we have transitions here to begin with. In addition, at both schools counts as a, tradition, as a transition, as you can see. We also have words that show signal words that show we are writing about compare and contrast. We have similar and different and we copied that right from the directions. We have while we have comma but so that's a complex sentence in green, a compound sentence in purple both Better is a comparison word. Okay, so this is one, you can see red, green, purple, orange, black. These are five sentences, but they are five good sentences. If we want to show compare and contrast, we usually need to include some compound sentences using but and some complex sentences using either while or even though. And for this is for, con, for contrast, which means different. To show the same, we 
want to use the word both. So both will help us see how they are similar and but or, and while or even though will help us see how they are different. And again, we the key thing on here was in these directions, it said, remember we're looking for something that can give us three things. So in the directions it said, compare how much time on each computer activity. That's the key, on each computer activity. Because when we come here and look at the computer activities, there are three, one, two, three. So those three activities are going to become the one, two, three things in our Foursquare that we are giving examples of. So our main idea, we can take right from, for your main idea, go back and look at the directions of what, what do they want your writing to show. They want you to show how the amount of time is similar and different. So we include that in our main idea. Okay, the amount of time is similar and different. And then we compare the amount of time they spend on video games, reading online, on schoolwork. And then for our last sentence, we can give our opinion about which school is doing the better job.